Transforming people, transforming cities. Manor Mission Church invites you to The Gospel Transforms Life at Barking Methodist Church, 39 London Road, Barking, Essex. Call you know this account. And every year on the day of Pentecost, it is rehearsed. But today, we want to go deeper and glean some principles that we live in this end times. Living in a great city like London, to have the same insight so that we can do our portion of the end time harvest. The passage we read about contains a lot of information about how after the birth of the church, because the church was born on the day of Pentecost, how the church reached out to harvest 3,000 souls on a single day in Jerusalem. In our modern times, Jerusalem will be called a metropolis, a mega city like London. Jerusalem was a melting point on that day for all manner of people speaking all kinds of languages in the then known world. And just like the city of London today, on that day we were gathered together people who were on pilgrimage, who spoke Greek, Latin, Spanish, Arabic, African language, Italian, French, German, Hindi, Mandarin, Russian, etc., etc. They had all gathered. Like the teeming crowd in London. Every day, people from all nations move across this land. Is it by accident that you are a Christian in a great city like this? A city where Japanese, Chinese, Africans, Americans, Argentinians from every corner are represented here. It was just like the day of Pentecost. The Bible says they all heard simultaneously the message of salvation being spoken by the apostles under the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Pentecostal fire had just fallen upon them and the church we will say was on fire ready for the harvest of souls that God had prearranged by his eternal purpose and wisdom just like today just like today in London and elsewhere including areas behind the so called iron curtain God has prearranged souls ready for harvest sometimes they will react negatively but I tell you there is hunger in their lives only they don't know because the devil has blinded them to what will satisfy the test of their soul on that day like in our day the events characterized the move of the Holy Spirit caused a stir like there was a stir where guys went to preach today it caused a stir that is why people made fingers and threw words at you because when the Spirit moves it causes a stir and I pray that from Jesus, as you go out, even to work, your presence will cause a stir. It cause a stir. For it is recorded, and I quote, they were all amazed and perplexed. This afternoon, some people were perplexed. Some people were amazed. Saying to one another, what could this mean? They could not understand how people who were Galileans were speaking Spanish, Chinese, Mandarin and all those languages because a supernatural power, the supernatural power of God has fallen upon them and if you want to take cities we must come under that supernatural power for philosophy cannot save people mythology cannot save people it's the gospel of Jesus Christ fired by the Holy Ghost in our mouth that can bring salvation and you are God's candidate for that work. Say amen. amen. Then others mocking said they are full of new wine. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We still have the same scenario in London and other parts of the world. There are people who are amazed or perplexed about the work of God, about Jesus, about the gospel of salvation about life they are perplexed about death they are confused about the christian faith and about the challenging times and the insecurity people are perplexed for many reasons in this 21st century like they were on that day then of course there are the mockers 
those who mock everything about God and that's what happened this afternoon those who mock everything about the word of God they mock things about Jesus about salvation through him they mock the things about the Christian faith about heaven and about hell for some of these mockers their position has turned into anger and hatred against the church against those who preach the gospel I would say there's nothing new under the sun so what might have happened over the weeks where people were venting anger they were doing what happened years ago today the Christian faith and all the great fundamental truths of Christian faith are being attacked and denied not just by those who do not share in the faith but sometimes by some who are sneak into the church in some jurisdictions the pulpits and Bible colleges have been infiltrated by enemies of Christ who teach and distort the facts to deny the authority of the Bible and the very date of the Lord Jesus Christ we know of course that these Antichrist acts are fully sponsored from the pit of hell by the devil who is increasingly becoming nervous because he knows that he has but a short time he knows he has a short time so he becomes nervous so what should be our response to all this how do we address those who are amazed and perplexed and those who are mockers and haters of god peter and the apostles teach us how and this evening we look at a few key points how we engage ourselves with the strategy the church applied on the day of pentecost which strategy is still valid potent and effective to win souls into the kingdom of god which strategy can still transform lives transform cities and transform people say amen praise the lord so what is the strategy how does it look like in acts 2 14 where i read the bible states that but peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice and said to them men of judea and all who dwell in jerusalem let it be known to you and heed my words today we say men and women of this great city called london be it known unto you and heed the words of the servants of god this verse contains three strategic points of interest for us as we seek and desire to reach out to our world to our cities to our villages to transform people and to transform nations say amen, amen. say amen. amen hallelujah the first portion of the scripture said but peter standing with the 11 peter standing up stood up with the 11 the time is now for every believer to stand up to stand up and stand up for jesus and stand up for the gospel of his kingdom a great saint who had gone ahead into glory ian bounds had this to say and i quote God expects to be represented by a fiery church or he's not in any proper sense represented at all God himself is all fire and his church if it is to be like him must also be full of fire a hungry world a perplexed world a skeptical world needs a church on fire to stand up and address his spiritual and physical needs no wonder the day of pentecost was characterized by fire and that fire is still burning for us to make any impact we must carry fire time has come for us to manifest that fire of the holy ghost in our worship in our song in our music on our drums, on our organ, on our guitar. That will bring salvation. 
because there are some guitars when they play it sends people to hell there are drums that drive people away from church but when those who sit behind the drum those who sit behind the organ those who play the guitar are on fire by the holy ghost their drums can draw people to christ hallelujah praise god peter and the apostles freshly baptized in the holy ghost then on fire stood up to face that mixed crowd with the truth the gospel of salvation of jesus christ not with philosophies or mythologies the world has been undated with philosophies before the days of aristotle it doesn't change people only the gospel so like them we must be fresh with holy ghost fire every day not at conventions and conferences but every day the old testament time the lamp in the temple was never meant to go off woe unto me and i if the fire on us goes off so like them we must be fresh tell your neighbor you must be fresh with holy ghost fire a church or a believer or holy ghost fire declares the message and preaches the gospel not with persuasive words of wisdom not with persuasive words of philosophy or mythology but with a demonstration of the spirit's power so that faith the faith of this mixed crowd in london in new york and other major cities of the world towns and villages this mixed crowd their faith will not rest on men's wisdom will not rest on men's philosophies will not rest on men's mythologies all the great empires that once were the greek empire the grecian empire the roman empire the persian empire they were all built on foundation of philosophies and mythologies they did not last only one kingdom established on the word of god will last forever which kingdom you belong we have the answer to the world that's why the end the devil fights the church he doesn't fight any institution the devil is not fighting the un he fights the church because it is the only institution that jesus said he will build and the case of hell shall not prevail i declare to you the gates of hell shall not prevail over you they will fight but they will not win say amen, amen. praise god that's why we are here for me it's a great conference it's a great conference like the conference that was held in the days of Ezekiel, in the valley of dry bones, it was attended by God, Holy Ghost, and Ezekiel, and an army was raised. In the rest of the street, God is raising an army. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Standing up means upholding the truth about God, about Christ, and about the Holy Ghost, and refusing to compromise. On the doctrines of the Christian faith. Standing up means to contend endlessly for the faith which was once and for all delivered to you and I. The dear Moody's Transpedions, David Livingstones, who crossed the Atlantic with the gospel, they knew what it meant. Like a relay race. One starts and the baton is handed over. It has been handed to us. Woe to us if we let the baton fall. We are to defend the whole truth of the revealed word of God, which is contained in His word, without adding to or subtracting from. The infallible word of God cannot be edited. I repeat. The word of God cannot be edited to suit any other doctrine, teaching, cultural beliefs, or practices. We can't edit.
taking the word of God to please any tribe, any race, any government. It's a word that cannot be edited. It is the supreme will of God revealed to give humanity life, hope, and existence, not only in this life, but also life thereafter. We are blessed to be messengers of this world. Today we are here as a continuation of this great conference. Recharge our batteries to move forward. The answer to the world's problems is with the church. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. It is significant to know that Peter did not stand up alone. The Bible says he stood up with the apostles. This entire harvest is not for lone rangers. It is a collective effort of all believers, all ministries, and all churches. That notwithstanding, if others are dragging their feet, those ready must stand up together and lift up the flame of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We live in the country, in the, the city. One of the iconic features of London is the sirens of the fire service, the police, and the ambulance. Each time you hear the siren, it means either a person is sick and is being attended to. We must blow the siren of the gospel, whether people like it or not, because it is the only hope by which men can be saved. So if others are dragging their feet, those ready must move. God can do with many, but he can also do with a few. Praise the Lord. Twelve men fired by the Holy Ghost. Who stood up to the crowd, turned Jerusalem upside down, and three thousand people from different geographical areas went back to their countries of origin, saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine those three thousand, each of them going back to where they came from with fire? That is why I said earlier on that cities like London, which is the melting point of cultures, races, tribes, whatever, is very strategic in the eyes of God. So you are not just here for accident. Or those of you who are watching in other great cities, you are in a strategic area for strategic purposes of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 